The following is a presentation from the Greece Historical Society. The second Tuesdays of the month programs from the Greece Historical Society are sponsored by members of the Greece Historical Society and by, by the sponsors of advertisements in the newsletter. Space for the second Tuesdays of the month programs is provided by the Greece Public Library. Turning the Dirt for Frederick Douglass, presented by Reverend Julius David Jackson Jr. Recorded February 14th, 2023. Okay. Are you ready to rock and roll? <laughs> All right. So thank you, Bill, and uh, who, who's the rest of the group, Bill, that I'm thanking? The Greece Historical Society. The Greece Historical Society. I want to thank them for inviting me tonight to talk about uh, my, my passion here in, in uh, Rochester. Um, Frederick Douglass is famous for the words, without a struggle there is no progress. Um, I indeed had a struggle starting in 2006 with a vision that I was given. Um, on my birthday, November 13, 2006, I attended the groundbreaking for the Martin Luther King Jr. Memorial in Washington, D.C. I was there as a VIP due to my efforts raising funds for the memorial through my fraternity, Alpha Phi Alpha fraternity, which I joined in 2001. One of the reasons for my joining the fraternity was my admiration for Dr. King, and that was Dr. King's memorial, which uh, I was raising funds for. Being um, That being the fraternity that Dr. King was a part of, I chose to join that one also. He joined in 1952 at Boston University. And it should also be noted that Frederick Douglass is a member of Alpha Phi Alpha fraternity. He was made a member posthumously in uh, December 27, 1921. Nevertheless, following my becoming a member of this organization, I immediately was put to work on a project for raising funds for the Tri-City area, uh, Rochester, Buffalo, and Syracuse for this monument. While attending the groundbreaking event, there were numerous well-known who's who's, nationally known celebrities and politicians also in attendance. Uh, we had two presidents at the time, uh, Bush and Clinton were there, as well as Obama, and he was a senator back in 2006. I guess you all can do the math and figure that out. <laughs> he wasn't president yet. But nevertheless, uh, the one that stood out the most for me was a number, another member of the fraternity who was Andrew Young, um, who was a friend of Dr. King's. As Brother Young took the stage in his remarks, he charged all of us in attendance with the words, Today we turn the dirt for Martin, yet return to your homes and begin turning the dirt there. For me, this manifested itself in returning to Rochester in pursuit of two visions to turn the dirt for our Frederick Douglass. In addition to being a member of Alpha Phi Alpha Fraternity Incorporated, I followed the path of a few of my fraternity brothers who also maintained dual membership with Eureka Lodge Prince Hall Masons. I joined in 2003, and I have a good friend brother here in attendance who's always supporting me. I want to thank you. I can pause to do that real quick, uh, Bing Reeves. Um, my turning the dirt for Frederick Douglass led me to lean on both organizations for their support, both Alpha Phi Alpha and Eureka Lodge, to pursue the, the visions that I was given. One was to pursue renaming the airport, the Frederick Douglass Greater Rochester International Airport, and the second was illumination of the monument in Highland Park, the first to an African American in the country. The monument in Highland Park was relocated there in 1941 from its original downtown Rochester location by the train station. The monument was a vision by my Eureka Lodge presiding officer predecessor, John W. Thompson. Um, he pursued this and it reached fruition June 9, 1899. And you'll hear more about him in the video that hopefully will be playing shortly. <laughs> in 2006, there wasn't much support for either vision with the thought of the airport renaming, receiving many asking the short-sighted question, what does Frederick Douglass have to do with aviation? 
the illumination of the monument was met with similar response. We can't light up the monument because it will incite vandals. <laughs> so ju just think about that for a minute. Back in 2006, they can't light the monument because it will incite vandals. <laughs> Does that sink in? Yeah, that's pretty sad. But nevertheless, fast forward a few years and both projects have reached fruition. Yet again, as you will see with the film, none of these visions could have achieved fruition without the support of others. Historians David Anderson and Andrew Williams provided the foundation and inspiration for increasing my knowledge, understanding, and appreciation for Frederick Douglass. Legislator Harry Bronson was there from the beginning. Larry Staub, the County Parks and Recreations Director, um, expanded the monument's vision uh, from just illumination to pursue a memorial uh, park that you see now. I just thought it should have lights on it. And again, thank you, <laughs> Larry Staub, for expanding that. And, there have been no vandals to the monument, in spite of what um, you see with the statue replicas. Um, again, we'll talk about that a little more later, but those uh, replicas, there's been three damaged, but uh, the original monument has not been touched. But nevertheless, um, I want to thank Richard Glazer, who petitioned for the airport to be renamed. Um, I had announced this at the ribbon cutting for the um, Frederick Douglass Memorial Plaza that I wanted my vision to be revisited to um, get the airport done. And he started a petition. He said he hadn't heard me say that, but nevertheless, thank you, Richard, for doing the petition, which prompted Adam Bello and uh, the Monroe County legislator, um, legislature to um, get my vision done. So thank you to, to them. As I was preparing for my annual Show Frederick Douglass Love event, I was also invited to a special press conference at the airport in 2021. To my surprise at that press conference event, it was announced that the airport was being renamed on that day, Frederick Douglass' chosen birthday of February 14th. The film that you're about to see um, was done before that date happened, so we don't talk about that reaching fruition because we didn't know that it would. Because what does Frederick Douglass have to do with the aviation, right? But nevertheless, um, local filmmakers, uh, Jackie McGriff and Deborah Alvarez, um, and with a gracious funding from Highland Park Conservancy, uh, we got a film done. And that's what you will be seeing shortly. But I want to show you just a couple of slides, give you a little extra visual to uh, some of what I just talked about. So, we were there, and then just went someplace else. <laughs> Here. Here we go. Okay. All right. This is John W. Thompson, who I spoke about, and he was the one who originated the idea for the monument. Um, his thought was originally uh, to have a monument for the U.S. Colored Troops, and this turned into a monument for Frederick Douglass after Frederick Douglass uh, passed away um, during. Uh, Thompson's pursuit. Thompson actually engaged Frederick Douglass himself in the pursuit, so he did have communication with Frederick Douglass. So Douglass was a supporter. This is the monument in front of the train station at its original location on Central Avenue. Um, currently there is one of the replica statues that Olivia Kim did that's in that place, so you can go and see exactly where it stood. This is the Eureka Lodge Masons laying the foundation there for the, the monument. Again, 
For some reason, uh, Eureka Lodge has been left out of a lot of what happened, but we, we won't touch that, right, babe? All right, good. <laughs> okay. This is the monument in Highland Park when it was moved there officially in 1941. This is the one of the um, historic Frederick Douglass days commemorating that June 9th event. Um, this gentleman here is John W. Thompson, and I believe this is his one of his daughters here. Jackie Sprague may help me out with uh, my accuracy on that. I will help you out with several things. Thank you. Beautiful. Thank you. Awesome. All right. And this is uh, Dr. Juanita Pitts. She was over the Friends of Frederick Douglass back at the time when I pursued this um, vision. And this is the Martin Luther King Memorial for anyone who's not seen that in Washington, D.C. I also have a replica and some other items up here that I hope you come up and, and check out. This is Brother Andrew Young. Uh, that was him in 2006. This is here when he visited Rochester. And these are my, my two sons when they're a little, little younger meeting uh, Andrew Young. And this is me as Worshipful Master of Eureka Lodge, number 36. And again, there'll be more about that in the film. And here's Harry Bronson. And like I stated, he was one of the original supporters um, and followed this process all the way through to fruition, both on the monument as well as the airport. This is the original Frederick Douglass light-up. Again, you'll, you'll hear more about that, but that was... Um, local folks with flashlights. Um, stealing from the, the uh, RIT um, light up, I tried to get RIT to do this back in 2006. And again, nobody wanted to do anything with Frederick Douglass. I don't know why, because he's everywhere right now. Okay, and this is fast forward 2019. We're breaking ground on the Frederick Douglass Memorial Plaza. And again, um, I, I don't think we need any mathematicians to uh, figure out how long that took from 2006 to 2019, right? And this is the, um, the movement of the monument. This is that on the ground. Yeah, that was it on the ground. And, uh, they had to take it off the, the base to move it, you'll see. And this is so heavy that they didn't have this secured with anything. When they took it off and replaced it, um, they put some type of adhesive on it, but that wasn't present back in 1941 when they moved it. And this is the ribbon cutting a few months later after it was moved. Uh, there's Dr. Anderson, one of my mentors, and you'll see Harry Bronson back there. This is Larry who's cut off a little bit back there in uh, Lightfoot. Okay, and there's, there's a better picture of Larry, the Monroe Park County Parks Director. And these are some Alpha Phi Alpha brothers and Carlos Merriweather who um, called me up um, when we did one of the first uh, light us and said, hey, I'd do a reenactment of Frederick Douglass. He came to fame nice. doing this. So, um, good friend, and he's at everything now. <laughs> nice guy to me. Okay. And there it is in all its glory. And this is, whoops, of course I missed him. This is Richard Glazer. He's the one who did the petition that got this um, moving forward. Got the county legislators and Adam Bell and everyone on board. And this is the Monmouth Monroe County Legislators. There's uh, Carvin Eisen back in the back, um, and Richard again. Um, but that, that's all of our local Monroe County folks. 
Okay. And this is Mayor Lovely Warren. She was mayor at the time. Um, I received the key to the city, which is over there um, also. And this is uh, our current county executive and current mayor, I should say, and Bella. And our mayor is also a member of both Alpha Phi Alpha Fraternity and Eureka Lodge. Mm -hmm. So another one of those dual brothers, as I mentioned before. Okay. And this was at the surprise event that they told me was just a press conference. And um, I went there and it was officially renamed the airport, Frederick Douglass Greater Rochester International Airport. And this is another event that uh, I started, um, Show Douglas Love. We were um, putting flowers out at the, the monument. This year we didn't do it, but um, again, I'll talk more about that after we get to the movie. I don't want to play it. Brother Frederick Douglass with all the, <laughs> the, the paraphernalia. And this is one of the, the replica statues that I made reference to, to earlier. Um, a sculptor. Uh, from RIT, Olivia Kim, she did this um, sculpture. There's 14 of them, unless I'm miscounting, around town at all historic locations of uh, Frederick Douglass that are significant. And currently there is a bronze that's in the airport. But all, all of these are fiberglass. And actually one um, I did work on with my sons. Um, and I don't know which one it was, <laughs> but uh, we, we did do some uh, support work there. And that's uh, Dr. David Anderson, you know, one of my mentors. This is uh, Frederick Douglass' family. That's um, Ken Morris and his mother. Um, and I'm going to mess up all of the great, 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 greats that they are, <laughs> are descendant of Frederick Douglass. Uh, descended from Frederick Douglass on one side and Booker T. Washington on the other side. So, okay. And there's uh, Olivia Kim, one of the statues and her working on it. And this is the bronze that's at the airport now. Okay. And this is Erica Mock, who is one of the, um, well, the, the leader of the Frederick Douglass family initiatives here in town. Uh, Carvin Eisen, uh, what's Carvin's, uh, RCTV, so he's with RCTV and also directed the project that had the replica statues all over town. And uh, that's our governor, Kathy Hochul, and you all might know that guy by now. <laughs> And there's a sign in all its glory, but at some point um, that will be enhanced as well. They're gonna light it. <laughs> <laughs> we got hecklers in the audience. <laughs> <laughs> okay. And, and here's Andrew Williams again. He's been a great support uh, over the years. Great historian. Um, you'll hear more about him in, in the film when we get to it. But these are two uh, publications that he wrote pieces for uh, on my pursuits with the monument. And also he encouraged me when, um, over this 15, 20 year period, um, I was going to just close it up. <laughs> and he said, hey, you got to come back and uh, continue pursuing this. So, owe a lot to Andrew. And these are the filmmakers. Uh, you've got Jackie McGriff and Deborah Alvarez. Two brilliant young people, very young people. Um, but again, you'll see their work very shortly. Okay. Now the fun part is getting to the link that was just here. It wasn't working before, but I think
now the million dollar. Uh, <laughs> how do we switch it from one to the other? The city of Rochester, New York has been home of many notable and distinguished residents, especially in the mid 1800s. But one resident in particular is regarded as her most prominent resident, Frederick Douglass. Who was Frederick Douglass? Frederick Augustus Washington Bailey was born into slavery on the eastern shore of the Chesapeake Bay in Talbot County, Maryland. On September 3rd, 1838, Douglas successfully escaped slavery by boarding a northbound train. Not long after, he changed his surname. In his first autobiography, Douglas stated, I have no accurate knowledge of my age, never having seen any authentic record containing it. Though the exact date of his birth is unknown, he celebrated February 14th as his birthday, remembering that his mother called him her little Valentine. The year of birth is considered 1818. As a fugitive slave and being highly pursued by his master and bounty hunters, Douglas would often travel to Europe for the purpose of giving lectures and promoting the abolishment of slavery within the United States. During one of these trips in 1846, his freedom was purchased from his slave master. Upon returning to the United States in 1847, using monies given to him by English supporters, Douglas started publishing his first abolitionist newspaper, The North Star. He did this from the basement of the Memorial AME Zion Church in Rochester, New York. The North Star's motto was, right is of no sex, truth is of no color, God is the father of us all, and we are all brethren. In the 1840s, Rochester was known for its zeal to end slavery and a promising escape route on the Underground Railroad. It was conveniently located along the Erie Canal and railroads, midway between New England and the Midwest. Douglas and his wife, Anna, made their home in Rochester for 25 years. Despite living through one of the nation's most bitter and terrifying times, Douglas and his wife raised five children in a loving home with flowers, fruit, and vegetable gardens. While Douglas traveled widely on lecture tours, fighting for the freedom and rights of his brethren, Anna cared for their home and their families and an extended circle. Their home was open to freedom seekers on the Underground Railroad, visiting abolitionists, and house guests who stayed for weeks, months, and even years at a time. Douglas called Rochester home from 1847 to 1872 and lived here longer than anywhere else in his life. In Rochester, he published his newspapers, The North Star and The Frederick Douglass Papers. He assisted friends Amy and Isaac Post on the Underground Railroad activities, hosted runaway slaves in his own home, gave speeches, supported the women's suffrage alongside suffragist Susan B. Anthony, and much more before moving to Washington, D.C. in 1872. The Douglas family moved to Washington, D.C. as a result of their home being destroyed by fire. Upon his death on February 20th, 1895, at the age of 77, many tributes to Douglas were made in Rochester, throughout America, and in Europe. Yet, perhaps the greatest tribute of his life and times was the erection of the monument unveiled in Rochester on June 9, 1899. The eight-foot likeness of Douglas, made of imperishable bronze atop of a nine-foot pedestal of westerly gray granite. 
John W. Thompson, a young community activist and admirer of Douglas, spearheaded the four-year project that saw many disappointments and delays. When his vision was realized, national attention was given to the event and the local celebration drew many American leaders of social justice to the city of Frederick Douglass. What a celebration it was. As music filled the air, crowds filled every available space within 300 feet of the commission work of art, including the roofs of surrounding buildings. American flags streamed in the wind. About 10,000 people gathered to witness the unveiling of the Frederick Douglass Monument. More than 2,000 participated in the parades that approached from various directions and converged on the newly named Frederick Douglass Park. Nearly every military and civic organization from Rochester and Monroe County was represented. They could hardly find room in the streets to march as thousands upon thousands cheered them along. On that day, June 9, 1899, Rochester led the nation in honoring African-American citizens, the first monument to do so in the history of the United States. In 1941, a special committee appointed by the city government voted to move the Douglas Monument to Rochester's famous Highland Park, not too far from Mount Hope Cemetery where Douglas was laid to rest. The monument was located steps from the former site of Douglas's South Avenue home. In 2019, the monument was moved to an even more prominent and illuminated location within the park and is now located on the corner of South Avenue and Robinson Drive. Reverend Julius D. Jackson Jr. picked up where John W. Thompson left off in honoring Frederick Douglass and his importance to Rochester, New York. What is the connection between John W. Thompson and yourself and explain why? Okay, both John W. Thompson and I are members of Eureka Lodge, um, Prince Hall Masons here in Rochester. He was the fifth worshipful master and I was the 70th worshipful master and the worshipful master he is our uh, fancy ancient word for president, presiding officer. So we both held that position. So I don't have to bow to you or anything like that? No, not, not at, all. At, all. at all. Now, John W. Thompson has been um, deceased for a long time. Correct. Okay. But he initiated something in Rochester that still exists. Correct. And that is the Frederick Douglass Monument. Correct. Okay. Which includes the granite base and the statue. Right. Okay. You had the idea of illuminating the monument. Correct. How did that idea come about? Being from Rochester, um, I pass by that monument on a regular basis and noticed that it's not illuminated at night. So you can't see it. It's basically, it basically disappears at night. Um, all sorts of uh, events and different things take place over there in that area and nobody knows who that is and what, nor the significance of it. So um, I thought it needed to be illuminated. I got the push from that when I attended the Martin Luther King Memorial on the groundbreaking. Uh, at that event, Andrew Young, who uh, was a contemporary of Dr. King, uh, also ambassador, um, Andrew Young, he uh, took the stage and mentioned that we turn the dirt today for the Martin Luther King Memorial, yet for each of you here attending, return to your homes and turn the dirt there. To me, that meant highlighting some of our historical figures that don't achieve the, or haven't achieved the recognition that they deserve. Um, specifically for me, that was Frederick Douglass. He was out there in the dark, okay. illuminating him. So, knowing that the park held the monument in the bowl, and there were various activities that happened in the bowl, what were you envisioning for the monument as it relates to illuminating it? 
just basically being able to see it at night. Um, monuments all over the place have illumination. Uh, even the Martin Luther King uh, Memorial down there. So I'm, I'm sure some of that helped uh, spark what, what I envisioned for illuminating that monument here. And how long of a process was it? It was a 15 year journey from uh, the, the dream starting and uh, letting folks know about it to it reaching fruition. Were there stumbling blocks in the way? Um, most definitely. Um, folks that, that basically scoffed at the idea. Um, there was a mindset at the time that illuminating the statue would incite vandals. Would that be because it was Frederick Douglass or would that be because they didn't want to do it? Uh, it may have been both, um, but that was an ongoing thing that, you know, this monument to a person of African-American descent may incite vandals. Who in fact did you contact concerning this project? Um, in, in the beginning, um, there was a number of people I contacted, but one who uh, stood by me from the, the, the initial um, mention of it to its fruition was Harry Bronson. Harry at the time was a local uh, county legislator, he's now uh, with the state, but uh, Harry got some initial funding for it. Um, he also um, brought the county on board, which led to the uh, county executive, as well as uh, the county parks director, Larry Staub, who brought the dream from just illuminating the statue to it actually being moved to what we have now, a more prominent location, um, still in the park. And what we have now is the Frederick Douglass Memorial Plaza. Plaza. Correct. Okay. Which includes more than just an illuminated monument. Correct. It has other significance relating to Frederick Douglass, like the North Star. Exactly. And um, well, on the monument, there are quotes of Frederick Douglass that are right. famous. Yeah. You know, and that was there from the beginning. Yes. And again, those uh, are things that need to be highlighted as well. Right. I think it's significant that Highland Park holds the Frederick Douglass Monument, which was dedicated in 1899. Now, it was originally in downtown Rochester and then moved to Highland Park in 1941. Correct. It is also significant that Frederick Douglass lived just a few hundred yards away from where the monument is, right. and he lived there with his family, his wife, and five children. You know, um, but Frederick Douglass and Highland Park are going to be synonymous with Rochester history at this point. Correct. Okay. Definitely. Tell me some of the difficulties that you had during the 15 year process. Um, one of the major difficulties was just being discouraged um, along the way, um, you know, with, uh, again, the, the folks that, that, that scoffed and said it wouldn't happen, um, you know, I kind of uh, took a step back from it, but uh, they were um, individuals like yourself who uh, encouraged me to, to keep going, you know, and uh, that, that was a great help to me to have that, that wind beneath my wings to keep moving forward with the project. You conducted several programs or events at Highland Park at the original site. Right. What were they and what was their purpose? The, one of the initial events that carried on for a couple of years there was illuminating the, the statue with flashlights. Um, this is the idea that uh, I'm a RIT alum and uh, they have something called the, the Big Shot. And um, I remember that thought and I actually approached some of the folks at RIT about doing the, the big shot along with me for, for the monument, but they were a little slow on it, so I did it myself. They were a lot slow. Extremely slow. Because they eventually did it. Yes. 15 years later. Yes. <laughs> yeah, but um, nevertheless, I, I took that upon myself to uh, do that, inviting the community. Um, school-age kids uh, in the evening to bring their flashlights and we illuminated the, the statue ourselves with, with flashlights and it showed that it needed to be 
done. When did you know that the idea had taken root in Rochester for the monument to be eliminated? Um, in 2018, when um, I was called up and uh, talked to by uh, Larry Stop. Larry Stop uh, let me know that um, this idea that I had for eliminating the statue was uh, going to be fully funded and uh, we're going to do even more so than what I originally envisioned. Fully funded, was that from Monroe County or from where? Uh, both the county and the state um, provided funding for, for that plaza. So that would have been through Assemblyman Harry Bronson? Correct, Harry Bronson uh, securing that funding and uh, getting all that together for us again from the start. Harry has been there for us. Having a dream deferred but not denied, what does that mean? Um, well, just this whole project, you know, it was a dream and again, lots of uh, stops and starts along the way, um, but it did reach fruition. Um, 2018, we had that uh, reach fruition, getting that monument not only illuminated, but moved and illuminated and in a more prominent location. And when we hear the term turning the dirt, what does that say? to people today in Rochester and beyond? What does it actually mean? Uh, for, for me personally, turning the dirt means removing um, that which has been buried, um, meaning our history. Um, history has been told and they, there's some gaping holes in there. Um, there were people who were left out. You know, you, don't have to do very much research to uh, discover that. I mean, Douglas isn't as illuminated, literally, as he could be. Um, there's so many more heroes um, of African descent just in Rochester alone that uh, their history still has to be uncovered and, and brought to the forefront. I really appreciate talking to you about turning the dirt. Yes. And um, I hope that what we get is people who have ideas to see them come to fruition as it has for you. Yes. Congratulations. Thank you. Now it's time for Q&A with Reverend Julius David Jackson, Jr. We're going to open up for, for Q&A. Uh, technology happens. Um, yeah, it doesn't happen. Yeah, or it doesn't happen. Thank you. <laughs> Even better. We got jokes in here. Yeah. Come on up. I don't speak loud enough for everyone to hear me. Like, yeah. nice to Famous see last words. They want to see you. Come on up, oh, Jack. They have to turn around. Right. <laughs> By the way, I'll speak as I'm walking to save time for other people. I'm Jacqueline Sprague. Uh, yeah. my, um, several of my family relatives were in that video that you saw. I love this gentleman here. Hello. <laughs> How are you? Nice. Good to see you. I'm so happy that Again, this is like the third time that this has been done here in the last couple of years. Matter of fact, the Sprague spoke a couple of times um, with you yep. at events. So just to share very quickly with you, there are a couple of things. This gentleman worked for years to try to get the airport renamed. It's really interesting when you stop and think about it, the, the real thing that pushed the airport being named was that there were 5,700 petitions and from people around 
the country and some of them from outside of the United States. So what do politicians want? They need the leverage. And actually Richard A. Glazer, he says, make sure I say A. Glazer because their middle initial A because he's not related to the wealthy Glazers. <laughs> so he wants to make that clear. John um, W. Thompson was a very good family member of my family. John W. Thompson was here in the 1830s, like my family, the church that you saw up there. My grandfather was born in the parish house. At the age of 20, he, it doesn't seem like a lot of money now, but he actually raised $300 for the statue he was on the committee with his cousins that were other sprigs. So there's a lot of history here in Rochester that we don't know, that we have to uncover. We have to really give a lot of recognition to the threat of people who were involved. And the Masons were absolutely tremendous in that effort. What we have to do more is what? How many of you know about your own family history? How many generations back? How many know five generations back? All right, see what I'm talking about? When we, can, when we can teach children about history, when we can teach them not only about Frederick Douglass, but what the generations are doing today, that is important so that we weave a web in regards to consistency in teaching and learning. So that's all I want to say. I thank everybody for, for being here today because this is important and you have the right person up here sharing information with you. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, and, and Jackie's minimizing herself. She's one of our, our treasures here in Rochester, too. But there's a number of them. And as I mentioned before, Bing Reeves. Um, he, he doesn't want to talk today, but, you know. He talk at here least before. stand up and turn around and wave or something. But yeah, he, he's, he's a great supporter. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. Um, but, like I said, it's open for questions. Oh, we got my friend, Mr. Blunt, back there from About Time Magazine. There's, this is his baby. He and his wife, Carolyn, um, did this. Um, 50 years. 50 years. Yeah, um, they're doing electronic editions right now, but this is a treasure. If you have never read about Time Magazine, I don't know where we get back issues from, but a wealth of knowledge is in here. I did a history uh, project some years ago, and if it wasn't for this, I don't know where a lot of our Rochester history would be, um, even on the, the monument. Um, here, it even has me talking about the airport. If it wasn't for this being in print, I wouldn't be able to even prove it. <laughs> Seriously. But it, it, it's, it's in print. And uh, as, as I alluded to with Bing, and, you know, and I'm, we're, we're all family here now, right? There were, there were some who were trying to squash the fact that I even came up with the idea to name the airport. Can you believe that? But, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, but it, it, it's, it's there in black and white. Um, so, you know. <laughs> well, again, we won't get too deep into that. We won't name names. But anyway, uh, if there's any questions. Um, yeah. A contemporary question is yes. who controls the naming of the airport? Is it local or federal? Or uh, the county. The yeah. county. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, so uh, the airport is a county airport. It, it's actually kind of misnamed right now. It's international, but there's no international flights coming in and out. I thought there was one that went to Canada or something. Like History, yeah. at, at one point, but by the time they got around to renaming it, it was not going to Canada. So, like I said, that might be. I think it was. They did a thing on whether it's international, and it is international because they have. Uh, Frenex and DHL come in. Beautiful. All right, so they, uh, did, did that happen just recently? No, they've been doing it all the, oh, the whole time. The other day. Oh, even better. Okay, so. Passengers, but they're on the other side. 
Orange Gospel Road is international because of the freight private. Okay. Well, good. So we're, we're legal then. Yes. Yeah. So, all right. Just that much. All right. Uh, any other questions? Nobody else. So I know Frederick Douglass was born into slavery. Right? Yes. And then he, he became one of the greatest orators ever. How was he educated? How was he, you know? It's pretty much self-taught. Um, Jackie may help me out with this a little more. Um, there were some people that were assisting. I can't name them, but um, they were assisting. He wasn't formally educated. But, uh, if you read some of his writings, you would swear he had a PhD. That's what I was yeah, so. Thank you. Uh, what's next? Is there going to be a museum? Yes! Actually, that was announced uh, this morning. Um, yes, where the Frederick Douglass Family Initiatives is on Main Street. That will be the new home of the Frederick Douglass Museum. Um, so, again, fresh off the press this morning. Wow. So, so uh, oh, I'm sorry. Are they raising money? or? Uh, yes. Okay. Yeah, so, like, with the monument and the airport, you know, money's coming from everywhere. But um, hopefully by, I think, 2024, um, we should see something happening there. Wow. Um, they're going out to bid for contractors to <coughs> design what is going to ultimately finally be the, the um, museum there. Yeah. Is but it right now, the like, government, governor's budget, or is it? Uh, whole separate thing. Uh, I believe some of that is governor's budget. Uh, so and that picture that was up there, uh, that was her here yesterday. Right. So oh. there's some behind the scenes stuff going on uh, for some funds to be coming our way. Um, why did you want to rename the airport specifically? What does he have to do with it? Repeat the question. Sorry. Oh, uh, the question was why did I want to rename the airport? It made sense to me. Um, the original um, location of the monument was near the train station. So, of course, you don't have as many folks taking the train as you did back then, but the gateway to Rochester is the airport. So what better place to have Frederick Douglass honored than in the gateway to Rochester, which would be the airport. And again, for those folks that were saying to me, you know, what does Frederick Douglass have to do with aviation? What does Ronald Reagan have to do with the aviation? <laughs> we know what he did to the air traffic controllers. <laughs> um, you know, what does Louis Armstrong and, and several others. Uh, there was a picture up here of um, the guy who had the um, Jackson Airport named. Not after this Atlanta, Jackson. Georgia. <laughs> but Atlanta, Georgia. Atlanta, Georgia, yeah. Hartsfield Jackson Airport. Um, Emmett Burns. Okay. He was uh, one that actually uh, I encouraged to be brought up here when they had the Frederick Douglass Resource Center. They actually funded that for me. I mentioned we need to talk to Emmett Burns. They brought him up. So it wasn't funded by me. <laughs> so I can't take credit for that. Yeah, what, what happened, happened to the Susan the neighborhood? Uh, uh, how do you answer that? <laughs> is it available? Uh, is it available to the community to use? No, the Frederick Douglass Resource Center that is on King Street is no longer in existence. Um, Building still. To there. to make it simple in a word, mismanagement. <laughs> yeah. So who who yeah. who has control over it? Uh, no one at the moment. It is owned so, by a private owner. Yeah. The building is owned by a private owner. Yeah. The same so, one yeah. that had it before? No, no. That different thing? owner. Okay. All right. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> okay. So it, it has, its former use is no longer. So that's, that's still, the easiest way to say it. It's still there. The building is still there, okay. but it's not Frederick Douglass. They took the name center. off? Yes. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> that, building, that building is where my great grandparents so, lived before, you know, in that neighborhood. <laughs> okay. Well, good. Yeah, thank you. Thanks, Bill. Right. Yes. That's good to know. <laughs> well, you know. <laughs> you made uh, reference to the there were three. Um, oh, 
how they can hear you. All right. There were there were three statues that were damaged. Three statues that were damaged. Is one of them in front of Hockstein because I called the city of Rochester and asked when they were going to return it because my grandson and I walked. We walked it. And we had scarves and things on, okay. and we would look at it every time we went in for him to do his lesson, and then it was gone one day, and no one told me tell me what happened. Yeah, I didn't know about the one at Hochstein being missing. <coughs> so the one you can get it back there. <laughs> I'll, I'll, I'll talk to Carmen. Maybe but the, the three that were damaged, there was one over by the Y on Lake Avenue. That one was damaged. The one on Main Street next to uh, the name of the park is escaping me. But it's right across from the convention center. Whatever that, and Bank, right on the Genesee River. Exactly. So whatever that park is there, that was the other one that was damaged. And the third one was where the hospital used to be, Alexander Street. Yeah, Alexander Street, thank you. Okay. You're keeping me busy. Yes, that was the first one. Yeah. Yeah. What was the name of the street over there? Tracy Street. Tracy Street. Okay. I remember it was a lady's name. All right, so thank you. Tracy's a man. Yeah. <laughs> oh, well, yeah. Uh, we, <laughs> we don't know today. Like Pat, I get it. So you said the locations of where the statues are, if I understood what you said, are places that are historically relevant with Frederick Douglass? Correct. Can you tell us a little bit more about all 14? Well, maybe not all 14, but some of them. Uh, yeah, and, and there is a link that you can go to and you can find out about each one. The one on Tracy Street was where, the one that was damaged, that one was where Anna Doug, Annie Douglas, Douglas's daughter, went to school at that location. Um, Rosetta. Was that Rosetta, not Annie? No. Okay, thank you. I'm glad she's here. <laughs> so I had the wrong daughter. All right, so uh, Rosetta went to school at that location. The one by Washington Square Park, that one is significant because that's where uh, John W. Thompson uh, saw that there was no representation of the U.S. colored troops in that monument. So, so that, that's two out of the 14. Thank you. you want me to go with the other 12? Only if you want to. <laughs> <laughs> All right. But, but yeah, but like I said, uh, we can send that out to you. Um, just go right online and it'll tell you Frederick Douglass Project. Yes. The statues that are in the community, according to Carbon Eisen, they are not made to stay out in the elements. So therefore, they're going to be all removed from those locations. If I understand correctly from what Carbon Eisen said, they're going to become taken by the city. What the city will do with them, I don't know. Okay. But they were not meant to be out for a long period of time, and they have been. And so therefore, they're starting to get damaged because of the weather right. conditions. Yeah. And, and, and Jackie's right. Um, my understanding also was that some of those will go to private owners, too. Um, I don't know if it's based on donations or individual purposes or what, but um, like she said, they're, they're fiberglass, so they've already passed their expiration anyway for, for longevity, so it's nice that they're still standing close to can we, can we talk about a minute why the statute was here? Because Mr. Douglas, in both 20 years, protected years of his life, was spent right here in Rochester, New York. Uh, if you ever have a opportunity to go to Washington, D.C. It's a new uh, uh, marina there. It's called the, the Mall of, what's the name of that? Uh, uh, it's right on the Potomac River on the Maryland side, not that far from the Woodrow Wilson Bridge. There are three statues, bronze statues, of people that had more impact on humanity during the 19th and 20th, 18th and 19th century. There was Franklin Roosevelt, Abraham Lincoln, Franklin Roosevelt, and who do you think the third one was? Frederick yeah. Douglass. Uh, it's some, uh, MGM Grand has a big casino there. There's a 10-story Ferris wheel there. Uh, it's unbelievable. You ought to go down there and see that sometime in the wintertime. But what I want to really say is 
Mr. Douglas and Susan B. Anthony gave a speech yeah. in Canandaigua, New York, in 1848, and it was the, an abolitionist speech for the abolition of slavery, and why should I celebrate the 4th of July? Obviously, right. Susan B. Anthony was advocating for women's suffrage, the right to vote, the right to participate in this democracy. And then four years later, 1852, right on the banks of the Genesee River, Mr. Douglas gave a speech. I've never read anything like that in my life. That's unbelievable. He predicted the Civil War eight years before it occurred. And it really occurred because he told the power of the thing is on you. If you don't turn the, the uh, black slaves out free, there's going to be big time trouble in this country. And all you got to do is go down Route 15, that's uh, Mount Hope Boulevard, and go through Gettysburg, Pennsylvania. You will see all those historic battlefields. And that's where our really <coughs> heroes, undocumented heroes, play because of the fight for a democracy on this earth. Thank you. Any other questions? Joanne, take your I hope that I hope this gets to play. Yes. Um, if, and thankful to Joanne, she is part of the Highland Park Conservancy. So I was just going to say that um, I hope we get to see this. But if we don't, or even if we do, visit HighlandParkConservancy.org. Oh, where there. the where the video is posted so you can see the whole thing. Thank you. Dot org. Island Park Conservancy Just go directly dot org. to YouTube on the TV and bring it up. Forget the laptop. Yeah, all right. Oh, can you? Oh, I yeah, yeah. Just go right to YouTube. That's YouTube. No, that's YouTube. Oh, YouTube, YouTube. 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 TV. Oh, I don't need that. All right. It's okay. Yeah, no, that's okay. It's a, it's a wrap. Oh, yeah. Presented by the Greece Historical Society. Want to learn more from the Greece Historical Society and Museum? Then click that subscribe button for more content and hit that bell icon to get notified for new content from the Greece Historical Society. You can visit us on the web at greasehistoricalsociety.org. You can find us on Facebook at Greece Historical Society. And you can stop in at the Greece Historical Society at 595 Long Pound Road.